Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can get GitLab CE going with a digital ocean droplet in no time at all. And then we're going to log in. You're going to get a little bit of what GitLab is like right off the bat. So let's get started now. Okay, so in honor of GitHub going down today, I know that a lot of people are having some issues with their repos, and I was just thinking how fortunate I was to have my own GitLab Community Edition set up on its own private server. So I figured I would take a video to show you the easiest, fastest way to have your own GitLab uh, Community Edition set up on a DigitalOcean droplet. Now, this isn't going to necessarily be the most economic version of having a private GitLab. For instance, we're going to have to pay $10 a month for our droplet. But to be totally honest, I would rather pay a host just for the server space that I can actually use for other things as well than to just pay GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket to store my code there. So now you might be wondering what GitLab is. Well, GitLab is an open sourced version control management system here, like GitHub, Bitbucket, or even GitLab's own hosted versions. It allows you to do things like issue queuing, you can have groups and private accounts. Uh, it's a whole big old system. Now the reason why I really like having my own private GitLab is that I can create as many user accounts as I want for anybody who wants to work on my sites, as well as have private groups set up my own permissions, set up my own issue tracking, and have it be completely customizable to my needs. Needs, and it can grow in team members without expecting a cost bump later on by having to jump to another plan or another tier. So let's go ahead and head to digitalocean.com where I'm going to log in. And this is, like I said, going to be the path of least resistance to getting your own private GitLab going. Okay, so I have some of this stuff blurred out so you can't see all of my droplets. But what we're going to do here is we're going to click on create droplet. And from Create Droplet, we're going to leave Ubuntu selected. We actually want to change the size. We're going to select the $10 a month, one gigabyte size. Now you could select this $5 one. However, you won't be able to use this one click install, which is really the easiest, least resistance way to get GitLab up and running. So $10 a month gives you uh, a one gigabyte CPU, a 30 gigabyte worth of disk space and two terabytes of transfer speed. I, honestly, it depends on how much you have going on this. If this is a giant project you can always scale your server up as you need it but for me this is just my own stuff so ten dollars a month is perfect however what we want to do now is scroll up and we have one click apps now one click apps is a way to get going quickly with a new droplet and you'll notice that we have GitLab 8.6.0 on an Ubuntu 14.04 which is exactly what we want so let's click GitLab here now you can see the size is still selected. The data center region, I can stay with New York 3. And I'm going to make sure I select backups. It adds 20% to the droplet cost, but if it's your Git information, obviously having a backup for it would be really nice. Now I don't actually have an SSH key, so I'm going to uh, not use an SSH key here. And I'm going to leave this as like so, and I'll just leave this droplet name. However, you can choose your own host name or droplet name if you'd like. Now upon clicking create, we're actually gonna have our droplet being created for us. You can see we have this droplet spinning up. And once it's done, we're gonna get an email with credentials that we can use to log in. Now at this point, you can see we have a new IP address. Keep in mind, I'm gonna be completely deleting this droplet after this video, so don't you know try to use any of these logins. Now let's go ahead and copy this IP address here and head to our terminal. Okay, so from our command line, we can type ssh root at, and then we're gonna to wanna to paste in our IP address. And this is going to be the one that it just created for us. I can hit enter. Now, we should have got an email that had our root password in it. And so what you wanna do is paste in that root password here. And then it's gonna ask you once again for that password as well as uh, a new password to change it with. So the current password is the one you just entered. And then the new password here and enter it again. And as you can see, I'm now SSH'd into a new droplet. 
Now let's go ahead and set this up with a domain. I'm going to head to DigitalOcean Networking and I'm going to post a new domain and it's going to be, and it's just going to be lab.leveluptuts.com. Okay, so just a little subdomain of Level Up Tuts here. I'm going to point it to my new IP and let's click create record. This is going to make it so we have our DNS pointing to the right IP for this domain. And that's really all we should have to do on DigitalOcean site now that we have this up and running. So let's head back to our command line. And you'll notice we have here our root username and password right here. So this is actually for GitLab. These are our GitLab credentials. Like it says, you can head to the IP address itself and you should be able to log in with these credentials. So as you can see here, I don't even need a domain. If you just want to keep this as a straight IP, then go right ahead. Uh, now what we can do is say root and then this crazy password that is generated for you. So let's sign in using root as well as this new password that is generated and let's click sign in. And as you can see, I'm now in my brand new GitLab. Now this is really super cool, but we're not done yet because I want this to be at lab.leveluptuts.com. So let's go ahead and make that happen. We can head back to our command line. Now I'm gonna open up in Vim a Ruby file. It's going to be Vim and then we could say forward slash etc forward slash GitLab forward slash GitLab dot RB. This is a file that should exist. And you'll notice we have some things commented out. You can hit I to get insert mode, external URL we can delete. Actually, I'm gonna leave this HTTP part and just retype the lab dot level up tuts dot com. Okay, so this is our new external URL. You can see we can now set things like the emails where they're coming from, the support. We can also enable SMTP. We can redirect to HTTP down here if we need to. I don't actually have an SSL certificate going here, so I don't need to mess with the certificate settings. But if this is something you're very serious about, this is where you're going to be sending your SSL settings. So now to save and quit this file, we can hit escape, and then we can do colon right quit, so WQ, hit enter. And now we can just run a single command, which is git lab forward slash hyphen CTL and then reconfigure. Now basically this is just going to go through and make sure everything is good. You can see it's restarting our services and we now have GitLab reconfigured. If we head back you can see that we can still access GitLab and we're still actually signed in through this IP address. Let's head to lab.leveluptuts.com and as you can see, it's taken me to the same GitLab. We can once again type in root and paste in our password here. Let's make sure I have it in my clipboard still. Looks like I do. We can save this. And now from here, we have GitLab fully set up. You could always come into your profile settings and we could change some information about our profile. We could come into account and update our username. But just from that video alone, we have GitLab up and running. You can create a new project like that and give it a name and then it'll give you a, let's just say test here. We can click create project. And just like that, we have our Git address that we can actually push to. You'll notice that we won't actually be able to push or pull until we add an SSH key, but that's the same way with GitHub or Bitbucket or any of these. So that's something you should be used to. I'll go over that in the next video. So as you can see here, GitLab up and running. We now have our own private Git system here where we can uh, manage all of our repositories, manage our issue queues, manage our groups, have a bunch of people working on it, set milestones, manage uh, pull requests, just all sorts of really cool stuff. I really love GitLab so far and I'm really liking having my own private Git repository. 
Like I said, there are going to be other cheaper options for just simply having a private repo. However, GitLab offers a ton of flexibility, and if you have it all in your own controlled system, then you can do whatever you want with it, and I personally really like that. So, as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment on the video or hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.